Hi guys and welcome to your daily tarot reading for Tuesday the 3rd of March 2020. I'm using the classic tarot, which I don't use very often. It's really old school. So let's have a look at what these cards want you to be aware of. I'm just going to tune into the energy of Tuesday the 3rd. Let's have a look at what the cards have to say. I hope you're having a wonderful March so far. I hope it started off really well. All right, so what have we got? We have the sixth card of the Major Arcana and it's called Choice. And that's an old school take on the lovers. I'll go into that in a second, but it was in reverse, wasn't it? Yes. Um, I'm going to leave it so I remember. Then we have the eight of wands, which we've seen quite a lot of recently. Lots of news, lots of things moving and happening and moving forward. So projects, yes. And then we have the king of cups. Oh, who in this deck is an intellectual. Whereas I would have said he's a hermit or a mystic or a family guy. <laughs> not, not Peter Griffith or whatever he's called. But someone who has a lot of love to give. Oh, and I love his shoes. Aren't they adorable? Love that. I love his whole get up. You see, some people are kings. Some people are pages. By the time you get to be the king, you've got style. Rich or poor, you have got it going on. I love these shoes. Adorable. Okay, so back in the day, or some decks still do this, instead of the lovers, they used to have this very... Um, uh, different scenario, which was a, a threesome, and the guy had to pick between who he wanted to be with. In this case, we are saying totally... Other. We've got some sort of bishop or king of some sort. Then we've got the page or this little knight holding a sword. And then we've got the fair maiden. And he's holding her hand and he's putting the sword aside. Cupid is blind, shoots its arrow and love. Okay, love has struck and then love. So what's he doing there? He's guiding him. It's almost like saying, I can see he's guiding him. So you see, in this case, it's, a, it's saying choice. And the young man is being driven into marriage. Let's say he's a prince. And it's expected of him to marry by his 25th birthday. And here, the current king says, oh, well, we need a grandson, we need an heir, otherwise we're gonna, this dynasty is finished. So he's barely got his long sword yet, and he's kind of being pushed to romance someone. And pure, poor Cupid here shoots the wife, and it shoots him. Look, they both have rosy cheeks, I suppose. So it even though that he is being pushed and coerced into something, it does, then love happens in the strangest of places. So this is one circumstance where those two actually being in love and having a great relationship is really unlikely because it's just a set up marriage by um, the parents or the powers that be. And the people involved have no choice. They just happen to get lucky here. Today, you do have a choice. You can choose what project you want to work on. And you can be discerning in what you're doing. In fact, I would like you to be discerning and to see how different things connect and how actions have consequences before you take action on any projects because you're really going to have to, you're really going to have, no. The lovers are in reverse. You have the choice whether 
to move ahead with projects or not, and that is down to you. Only you can decide that. And the great thing is that we have this intellectual on our side today. And the King of Cups to me represents the ideal, ideal guy, the ideal boyfriend, the ideal father, the ideal man you want in your life. The guy who's resilient. I mean, look at those legs, look at those pins. He's reliable, but he's also quite silly and he has fun and he's absurd and he's spiritual and he's creative and he's intuitive and he loves his children and he loves to have fun. He's got a sense of humor. He, he can be very, he, I don't think the King of Cups is the most fun person, but he certainly is the most nurturing. He's not the most spontaneous, but he certainly is the most adaptable and open to other people's ideas. So he's a really nice guy to work with. And in your personal life, it's who you want. It's really someone who is totally enamored by you. He's dressing up like a peacock, partly because he loves it, but also to impress you. And look at those rosy cheeks. I think that's how love is expressed in this deck. He's got the red cheek further up, so that's anger. I don't know. All right, so altogether, I don't really see a lot going on with other people romantically. I see miscommunications. I see that you have a choice to make, whether you let yourself be bullied into something or not, or whether you stand up to the powers that be. That causes conflict in itself. You know, if you come from a culture where it's just expected that by the age of 35, by the latest, you should be married and your parents are constantly on your back about it, sooner or later, you're going to either give in or say, hey, parents, you know, get off my back. And then there's a real rift and no one wants that. And this is the kind of thing that here it's resolved because he's pushed them and they're in love. This way it's unresolved and you have the choice. And sitting on a choice like that sometimes isn't very comfortable. The great thing is that we've got a plan. Projects and plans. I like the different languages here because it translates into other words in English. So the plan and the project, you do have one. Implement that. Ones, remember, is the element of fire. And eight, the eighth card of the element of ones is power. So powerful, fiery, Leo-like energy, hear me roar. I'm not only going to make a choice, but I'm going to make a deliberate choice that I'm proud of because I've not only listened to my feelings, which is really important to me because I want to make sure that any choices, I'm just speaking as, as you would or as... I think the inner dialogue will go on this day. No one's going to say, um, I, you know, I've made this choice now to um, be emotionally unwell. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be, I value my feelings and I value my sense of connection and that I'm able to live with myself as I said, based on the choices I make. And it's not just an emotional, I think almost sentimental way. This deck looks at the King of Cups as someone who's sentimental. So they put intellectual on there to say he's feeling and he is emotionally intelligent. He's intelligent in the sense of he knows what the outcome is going to be. So if, basically, if you listen to your feelings and what you think is right or wrong, and you put that into action, you're going to have a really powerful day. If you let yourself be bullied into things and leave up, leave things up to fate and, oh, I don't think this is part of my destiny. If an opportunity comes up and you feel it, it is your destiny because you feel passionate about it. So ignore all of the reasons why you can't and 
who's pushing you into something and why this door is closed and all the endless whys of why something can't work. I mean, there are a million reasons. And instead of that, you are naturally confident within yourself. You say, okay, I think and feel this is right and I have the power to see it through. So we're going to do that. So it's so low. The King of Cups, ironically here, being the most loving of all the kings, is by himself. I don't see a queen or another king anywhere for him to be distracted by, <laughs> by the relationships themselves. So he's left to his own devices and all that love and energy and intellectualism and thought and ideas, they have to go somewhere. And the best place for them is out in the world, not inside and not with other people who will put their two cents in and block your way and you'll be like, that isn't what I asked you. Your answer doesn't even have any relevance to what I asked. Don't you hate it when people do that to you? Like you're asking a question and they totally go off topic and it's like, a yes or a no, please. Is that is that so hard? <laughs> Number wise, we've got six and eight is 14. And the king is a court card, so he counts as a one. 14 and one is 15. And... 15 is 6. So 1 and 5 is 6. So 6 is a temporary opportunity. It's a window of opportunity that opens up that allows you to really use your strength and to make a plan happen and to put everything into it and to care about something by yourself. And it's not going to be there forever. So it's important to take the opportunity as it comes along. And days like this, you don't get all the time. You're not always certain about how you feel and what, you don't always have a plan. Sometimes you're lost and you're like, what am I doing? So other people influence you at times. Today, you're free of all of that to so make the most of it. Have a wonderful day. The opportunities being in areas you're passionate about. So that can be a relationship. It can be work, self-employment. It can be travel, moving. You can be passionate about a million things just the same way lots and lots of different reasons can tell you, well, you can't have that because. And today you can have because you feel and think and you're able to see things through. So have a great day. If you'd like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. You can order your reading with me on there. If you like this video, then please hit the subscribe button. And if you really like the video, then please share it online. That would be great. Have a wonderful day and I'll speak to you tomorrow.